going out to Rome's. Uh, so we're trying a different format with the Q and A uh, because uh, we get tons of great questions, uh, and then it turns into like an like a forty five minute long debacle at the end of the week. So we're gonna pick and choose, uh, you know, five or six questions a day. Say five good questions, uh, and uh, ha- hammer a video out uh, a day. It's gonna be a good time. So let's try it out. So first up is John Grossbauer, Andy, uh, if hey. Uh, if the Vikings draft Michael Penix Jr., uh, what would uh, be some concerns to have about him in the future? Uh, well, with Penix, number one, first and foremost, is the health and, and the injuries. And, you know, some teams may even keep Penix off their board because he's tore his right ACL twice. He's had other knee issues. He's had uh, shoulder issues. He's had AC issues. But the thing that stands out is he's been relatively clean uh, his last two years at Washington. Right, so uh, I I think that should certainly count for something. Uh, but I mean, Penix is going to be all over the place because I I feel like yeah, you know, Penix is shooting up draft boards right now because people didn't pay attention to Washington. And frankly, I think Penix should have been closer in the Heisman race uh, to Jaden Daniels, even though not not taking anything away from Jaden Daniels, he's an absolute stud. But people just didn't watch Washington, and I I think there is like an East Coast bias because. Uh, all of a sudden, people are like, oh, you look at Michael Penix Jr., blah, blah, blah. And then we, we get crucified for having Penix as our QB4 uh, in our rankings. But, I mean, Penix has been a stud uh, over the last uh, two years in Washington. And I, I think what's great about him is his quick release. And he's got huevos. He's got huevos to uh, throw balls in tight windows. His accuracy is, is natural. He throws receivers open as opposed to just throwing to open receivers. And also he's got good movement in the pocket. So, I mean, there's a lot to like about Penix Jr., but what's going to discount him is the health issues. And l- like I said, I-, I think some teams will take him completely off the board. Uh, some teams may opt for uh, other quarterbacks. Uh, so I for, for me right now, I, actually, we, we could pull up uh, our, our our quarterback rankings because we're professionals here. Actually, wait, I don't even have that up. Anyways, uh, here's here's like an older one, but eh, it's close enough. Uh, so Drake May at one, Caleb Williams two. Now, people are going to poo-poo Drake May at one. I, I just think during draft season... Uh, when when everyone's being dissected, I, I think uh, teams are going to fall in love uh, with, with Drake's uh, size, his accuracy, his arm strength, his athleticism, his his everything. So I, I think there's a good chance that uh, Drake May could be the first quarterback off the board. Williams uh, has a ton of hype. All, all this talk about him being a, a generational talent, I think there's some of that there. But also, you saw some knocks against him, uh, especially when he was under pressure, especially the way that he wasn't able to uh, carry that USC team or the way that he did last year when he had Jordan Addison. Mm. I-, I firmly believe that Jordan Addison made Caleb Williams and he made um, Kenny Pickett. It's kind of funny, man. But uh, I-, I think that Williams is going to be a top pick, too. He still might be uh, QB1, but there's going to be some question marks. Jaden Daniels is going to have questions about the one-year production, Heisman winner. Uh, and also, is he going to fit into an NFL scheme? I think yes. I think if Jaden Daniels doesn't fit into your scheme, change your scheme. Like He throws with accuracy downfield. He's got great athleticism. Uh, he's got great moxie as well. Um yeah, J.J. McCarthy, I think he was held back by the Michigan run-first offense. I think that he his traits are translatable to the NFL, but you're more betting on the come with him. And Bo Nix, you know, Bo Nix is sort of like McCarthy to a degree, is that I think that he, even though he put up great numbers in the Oregon offense, I mean, it's a you know short-throw collegiate offense to a large degree, but, but Nix has great downfield accuracy. He will unleash some piss missiles, and I think that, there's a lot to like about all six of these guys, and I think all six, and maybe even yours, uh, if he ends up declaring, will end up in the first round or a minimum the top 40 picks because I, I think you know there's always that feeding frenzy at the top of the second round. So I, in a spot where it's close, so, so like say the teams have Penix and McCarthy or Penix and Knicks close, I think that they may go with McCarthy or Knicks because just because of Penix's health or previous health concerns. Hmm. Uh, John Gramer. See, th- th- this is why these videos take 40 minutes, because uh, one question lasts, what, what five minutes? Mm. Uh, you're the Vikings' new GM. What is your plan this offseason? What is your plan for quarterback of the future? Perpetual O-line problems, defensive linemen, uh, Daniil and Harrison, etc. cetera. I'd love to hear your own perspective, because uh, I've looked uh, to you as a younger fan. Uh, extra question. Uh, 
what do you do to grow a substantial audience uh, on YouTube with your podcast? All right, so first question. All right, so what do we do? So I'm firing everyone. Nah. Uh, so taking over. Uh, so I, I'm not the new GM. I'm just inhabiting Quasi's body. So first off, I am extending Kirk. Ideally, a two-year deal, maybe a three-year deal, but really a, a one-year would guaranteed. I, I think you're good to go there. I, I think that does buy you some time, and also I, I think Kirk will give you the best chance to win in 2024. Now, that does not preclude you from drafting a quarterback in the first round. Too many people see this as a binary either-or situation. It is not. You can have your cake and eat it, too. Uh, so, all right, so starting quarterback, that's what I'm doing. I'm re-signing Kirk. I'm drafting a quarterback in the first round. Uh, I'm maneuvering to get my guy, whether it's uh, – in reality, Drake May, Caleb Williams, probably bye-bye for the Vikings, but Daniels, Penix, McCarthy, Knicks, viewers all firmly could be in that mix. Uh, I'm maneuvering or making sure that I get my guy uh, of those four. And then uh, I'm extending Jefferson. I'm re-signing Daniil. Uh, I'm unfortunately cutting Harrison Smith. I mean, he's due 14-4 next year. <sighs> yeah, um, I'm re-signing. I'm re-signing Dalton Rasner. Come on up for the Rasner. I'm uh, either in free agency or the draft, hammering an interior offensive lineman uh, who could challenge Bradbury at that center spot. I am doubling and tripling down on the defensive line. Like if, if the draft came away, quarterback at one. And then, you know, between second and fourth round, you come away with two great defensive tackles. Like, hell, if you can trade up and maneuver and get uh, Tavondre Sweat as well as Byron Murphy the second out of Texas, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Or some combination, you know, Murphy the second and Chris Jenkins from Michigan. Uh, go ahead and do that. Just go all in on that defensive line because it's been an issue uh, for the Vikings for a number of years. Yeah, Everyone complains about the O-line. The D-line has had just as many issues, especially since they switched to the three-man front. Hmm. Uh, second question, uh, what do you do to grow a substantial audience on YouTube with your podcast? I don't like nothing special, uh, to be honest, and I don't, I don't particularly look at the numbers uh, from day to day. Don't sweat over it, but I, I feel like <clears> – <throat> Just put out honest content and speak your truth because that's thing is like if you lie to people, you have to remember what you lied about, and that's too much stress. So coming on here, just talking facts, calling spade a spade, when applicable, talking a little ish, uh, having some jokes, having some fun. I mean, that's what we do, and do it consistently, uh, and keep shooting, shoot or shoot. Yeah, okay. uh, Justin Strollenberg. Uh, what is your opinion on the Kirko JJ situation? I think even Kirk might make JJ want to stick around. Do you think he will leave if we don't sign Kirk, but instead draft a promising rookie quarterback? So I, I think I've said this a bunch on this channel, but I, I think that the thing that's holding up the JJ extension is he wants to know who the quarterback of the future is going to be, and whether that's Kirk, who is clearly his guy, and he and uh, he and. Kirk and JJ clearly have a close uh, friendship and relationship. It's fantastic. Uh, so, And also, I mean, it's pretty clear that Kirk has a couple of good years of football left in him. So if it's that, fantastic. If it's a combination of drafting the quarterback of the future, so JJ can get can size up who this next guy is going to be and sort of put a stamp on approval on him uh, with Kirko, you know, the, the kid sitting for a year or two, yes, I, I think that's perfect as well. And also what it is that, you know, JJ – he doesn't want to waste his prime with a just a clown show of quarterbacks just rotating through. And I think he saw that this year, whether it's you know Dobbs with the hospital balls or Mullins with the interceptions or the Mormon missile not really getting a chance in that one half. I mean, that's, that's basically it. And so I, I think that's – it's not the money. The, the money is going to be there. He's going to reset the wide receiver market. No, uh, even, even if CD gets um, $32 million a year, J.J. is going to top that, and deservedly so. And so I, I think that's the thing that's holding things up now because he's like, hey, before I ink up long term and sign away my prime years, I want to know who's going to be throwing me the football. I want to know that we can put up points and win games. That's what he wants to do. Uh, next, uh, Harm's Way, uh, I got two questions for you. Number one, do you think the Bears will trade the first pick again and keep stacking up those future picks? I sort of thought about it. Now, all, all the reports are that, oh, they could get more uh, a larger haul than they got from the Panthers. But I think at a certain point, if you don't have your quarterback, you don't have anything. And with the Bears, I like Justin Fields. I think that 
the Bears have done him dirty uh, over the last couple of years. I think that Fields does have some upside. He has to be in the perfect situation. That was the report on him coming out of Ohio State. He has to have perfect offensive line. He has to have weapons around him, and then he can be that guy. But is he a dude who's going to uh, necessarily raise the profile of everyone else around him? No. I, I don't think that he is. And, again, that's not a demerit. That's just you know, it, it is what it is. And for the Bears, it would be embarrassing if you trade the number one overall pick again and then you get – you know, a starter uh, equivalent to like DJ Moore, and you pick up a nice, uh, a couple of uh, nice pieces like Wright, or you address the the D line uh, in in day two. Stevenson is a nice cornerback too, but if you do that again and you still don't have a quarterback, you've got nothing. So I think that they have to do their diligence, whether it's Williams, whether it's May, whether it's Daniels, whether it's Penix, and I think that they should stick and pick and, and take their guy uh, and trade Fields because. Fields after three years is still a question mark, and you can't have that. So I I would trade Fields. You probably you might get like a second round pick for Justin Fields at, at this point. So I, I would make that move, and then go all in uh, on your guy. Because remember, Poles and Everflues didn't draft Fields. Uh, it, it was that was a Ryan Pace special. So yeah, that's that's what I would do. Uh, two, what what do you believe the chances uh, are of Quasi picking up the phone and doing? Oh. Now, what was the rest of that question? All right, so the rest of the question, what do you believe the chances are of Quasi picking up the phone and doing business with the Patriots for the number three overall pick? Uh, so the Patriots end up top three. So that would be in range of, you know, depending on how the, how the rest of the draft goes, like uh, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix Jr. Because uh, I, I think that May and Williams are going to go one, two in some sort of order because of, because of the quarterback tax. But, I mean, if you're the Patriots, you, you don't have your quarterback either. So... Uh, I think that you would be di- disinclined to trade down. And also, uh, if you look at, well, s- said the Cardinals end up in the top three, you know, depending on, on what happens week 18. Uh, and you could be like, oh, you can trade down and come on down. So if the Cardinals have a hard on for uh, for Marvin Harrison Jr., they're not going to trade down so far that they won't get him. And now it's a, it's a great wide receiver class. So like Odunze is there or Neighbors is there, sure. Uh, but it's going to be tough because – Either teams at the top of the draft want a quarterback or they, they want to move down but not too far or they're the Bears and they're not never going to trade with the Vikings. So, I don't know. Uh, lastly, <clears throat> Traveler, with the season coming to a close, <clears throat> thoughts on Vikes players who exceeded expectations and players that underwhelmed. So, exceeded, uh, I mean, Metellus has turned himself into a Pro Bowl uh, type player. Same thing with Cam Beasy. you love to see that. Uh, Jordan Hicks had himself a career renaissance season. Frankly, when Hicks is on the field, I think that he was playing just as good or maybe better than at any point in his career, you know, going back to his uh, days with the Eagles and the Cardinals. Uh, Ivan Pace Jr., <clears throat> obviously coming out of nowhere, doing the damn thing. Uh, Brandon Powell uh, really looked like the wide receiver three this year. Uh, Harrison Phillips, even though you know, the Vikings D-line has been much maligned, he's been you know playing his ass off out there, uh, just haven't got it done because he's playing out of position. Uh, underwhelmed, or, or I would say overwhelmed too. Um, Addison, I mean, we, we knew that Addison was going to be good, uh, but nine touchdowns good. It's pretty solid. Uh, underwhelmed, Madison. Yeah, yeah. Ma- Madison, uh, KJ. Yeah, so far, well, KJ's uh, gotten better, but in the middle of the season, like, where was KJ? Uh, especially when JJ was down. Now you could point to, well, it was Josh Dobbs under center, but yeah. uh, Bradbury. Yeah, I mean, Bradbury's had some good moments. He's had a lot of bad moments as of late. Darisaw has been slipping uh, recently, uh, ever since his latest core muscle uh, injury. Yeah, I got to wonder if that's correlated. Uh, Marcus Davenport. Mm. Uh, Caleb Evans. Evans has had his high points. He's had his low points. I mean, his the dropped interception against the Chargers, which led to a touchdown, uh, as well as him getting straight up benched uh, against the Lions. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, Booth Jr. scene, you got to toss in there as well, even though I, I do believe in the potential of scene still. I mean, the Vikings safety room is extremely crowded. You want him to play just because he's a first round pick? Nah, nah. Uh, but, you know, the fact that it's year, heading into year three and neither of them are significant contributors on the defense yet, it's got to raise an eyebrow, uh, considering they were uh, Quasi's first two picks uh, in the draft. But uh, that's it. Uh, that's a little truncated uh, Q&A uh, for the day. You guys are the best. You know what to do? Skull production value.